Hi everyone, I'm Colleen Connor and I'm the co-author of the new children's book, The Locators, Adventure in South America, published by Esri Press. The Locators is a team of two children just like you and their pet parrot who travel to different parts of the world to help find and protect endangered animals. Today we're going to meet them and go on an adventure to find jaguars in the Amazon. My children loved being read to when they were younger, so today I'm going to read my book to you. If you want to follow along, visit the link shown here to find an online version of chapters 1 through 3, which is what I'll be reading today. So let's meet the locators. First up, we have Lucy. Lucy is a natural leader, always with a map in hand. She jumps at the chance to solve problems. She loves finding ways for humans and animals to live in harmony. Next up, we have Oliver. Oliver is exceptionally mechanical. His dream is to become a pilot, flying missions to any part of the planet that needs his help. And lastly, we have Mo. Mo is a parrot, and Oliver is his best friend. Mo complains a lot, but deep down, he is a kind bird. Helping Oliver and Lucy solve problems is his favorite thing. Now let's head to the Amazon. If you're following along with the book, or with the online version, go to page two now. Chapter one. Wow, I can't believe this view, Lucy said, eyes glued to the small plains window as thousands of trees passed below. It was the Amazon rainforest, the largest rainforest in the world. She, her friend Oliver, and her parrot, Mo, had flown far to reach this amazing biome in South America. It was even greener than she imagined best summer vacation ever. They didn't come to sightsee, however. Lucy and Oliver's teacher, Professor Meridian, had given them their first mission as locators. The locators were a group of kids who solved problems in the world using maps, technology, and spatial thinking. Lucy, Oliver, and Mo had been recruited by Professor Meridian to join her special school and the locators, and now they were finally going on a mission. Lucy was so ready to prove to her professor that she could count on Lucy and her team. Their first mission was to find and protect one of the rainforest's most endangered species, the jaguar. Deforestation threatened jaguars across the Amazon, and Professor Meridian had received an alert that there'd been an increase in jaguar sightings near towns recently. She deployed the locators to find out what was happening, and Lucy wasn't about to let her down. Oliver seemed less enthusiastic. Ever since they'd reached the Amazon, he'd been nervously checking the plane's autopilot system and muttering to himself. Usually, Oliver knew everything there was to know about computers and technology, so this was a worrying sign. What's wrong, Oliver? Lucy asked. Um, nothing. Nothing at all. We should arrive any minute. Mo popped up from the back seat in a puff of feathers. Yeah, right, we're flying in circles. We are, Lucy said. With only forest in every direction, it was hard to tell. I'm a bird. I know a thing or two about flying. If I say we're lost, it means we're lost. Trying to keep calm, Lucy grabbed her tablet from her backpack and pulled up the map the professor had given them. It showed the route from their hometown to their destination, but without more information, she couldn't tell where the plane was. I don't get it. We should be close, Oliver said. The landing strip is only a tiny distance away on the map. I overrode the autopilot to make the plane circle around, thinking we would see it eventually, but... Lucy realized the problem. Nothing was wrong with the map. Oliver just wasn't reading it right. Although the Amazon on the map didn't look big, that was because of the map's scale. The tiny distance Oliver saw on the map represented hundreds of miles in the real world. Who knew how far away they were? Squawk! Mo fluttered onto Lucy's shoulder and pointed to the fuel gauge with his wings. You better figure out where we need to go soon or else we'll run out of gas. As soon as he said it, the gauge started to blink. It was almost empty. The plane had flown in circles for too long. 
Now they probably wouldn't have enough fuel even if they did know where to go. This is bad, Oliver said, eyes wide. What can we do? Lucy asked. She searched the vast rainforest below. Her eyes settled on a clearing near a river. There, she said, pointing. Do you think we can land there? The autopilot system isn't designed to land without a runway. We're not going to find a runway in time. It's either there or in the trees, Lucy said. She really hoped it wouldn't be in the trees. I know you can do it. Oliver gulped. He flipped some switches and changed some settings. Okay, I'll try, but it's going to be bumpy. Everyone buckle up. See, that was easy, Lucy said as she climbed out of the cockpit. They'd managed to land, but one glance at the plane and she knew it was wrecked. Oh no, Oliver groaned. Our equipment is ruined. We're doomed. He rummaged around inside the plane before coming out with the phone Professor Meridian had given them. Even the phone is busted. Lucy frowned at Oliver's dramatics, then took stock of the surroundings. Dense foliage and underbrush. Birds sang from the treetops. Mo squawked back. In the distance loomed a single jagged peak. Doomed, Oliver fell to his knees. We have no clue where we are, and there's jungle for miles in every direction. Squawk, Mo said. You humans may be doomed, but for me, this is a hot vacation spot. Everyone keep calm, Lucy pressed a button on her tablet. We'll ask Professor Meridian for help on this instead. The tablet crackled to life. Luckily, the professor had modified it before their mission to receive a signal, even in the most remote areas. Professor Meridian appeared on screen. Each wall of her office had a monitor with a high-tech map. On her desk, though, was an old-fashioned globe. Lucy explained the situation. Aha! It's quite the pickle you've gotten yourselves into, my intrepid students, the professor said. She placed a hand under her chin, tapping it with one finger as she considered them. I'm sorry I wrecked the plane, Professor, Oliver said. Don't worry, these things happen when you're on an adventure, believe me. Now I'm sending you a map of the northern Amazon basin. Investigate your surroundings and see if you can determine your location on the map. Chapter 2 I think I found where we are. Lucy said, after comparing the map to their surroundings. It looks like we're close to the mountain called Pico de Neblina. Very good. That means you've crashed only 200 miles from your destination. The professor made it sound like a good thing, but 200 miles was a long way. Tell me, in which cardinal direction does the mountain lie? Lucy pulled out her trusty compass. The dial indicated that Pico de Neblina was to the north. Superb, the professor said. You're only a few miles from a camp of soil researchers. One of them is a former locator member. So there'll be a helicopter there to take us where we need to go? Oliver looked ready to jump for joy. He preferred working on a computer to hiking through the jungle. Nope, Professor Meridian said. Oliver's face fell. But they can help you get there in other ways. Then you'll be able to investigate what's threatening jaguars in the Amazon. Lucy was eager to get going. This was her first chance to study animals up close. She wondered what a jaguar looked like in the wild, creeping through underbrush, stalking its prey. She tugged Oliver in the direction to leave, only to remember she didn't know the way yet. Professor, she said to the tablet, can you add the camp's location to the map? Already done, Professor Meridian said. On the tablet, the map zoomed in and showed the area in more detail. It's up to you to plot your route. Chapter 3 I think my backpack is going to crush me, Oliver said, huffing under the weight. It did look a little stuffed to Lucy. But after the team had determined they needed to walk east and then south to reach the camp, they loaded up on the supplies they could salvage from the plane. Food? water, tents, and equipment. 
The entire trip would span about 60 miles, which meant they needed as much as they could carry. Unfortunately, the dense Amazon forest impeded their progress at every step. Lucy, leading the way, slashed a path through the thick vines and tangled brush with a machete. It rained the whole time. Although the trees formed a canopy above them, they were quickly soaked to the bone. Squawk! Mo ruffled his feathers to shake off the water. They don't call it the rainforest for nothing. I should have packed an umbrella, Oliver said, as he tried to wipe his glasses dry with his shirt. It was no use. As Lucy pushed through the next layer of underbrush, she suddenly stopped. Clinging to a tree high above them was a medium-sized furred creature with long arms and claws. It crawled extremely slowly along the branch, not slipping despite the rain. A sloth, Lucy whispered, trying to keep her excitement contained so she didn't spook the animal. She recognized it from their biology class. This was the best trip ever! Oliver stopped beside her. It moves so slowly. Doesn't it have to worry about predators? It's high in the trees. Not much can reach it. Lucy pulled her notebook from class out of her bag and shielded it from the rain. Let's see. The brown-throated sloth. Its primary natural predators are harpy eagles and jaguars. Oliver gulped and glanced over his shoulder nervously. Do you think... A jaguar's around right now? Probably not the best time to find out, Lucy said, taking one last look at the sloth. Come on, let's go. We made it, Oliver shouted, whooping in joy as they came to a stop. After several days of rugged hiking, they'd finally reached the camp where a group of scientists were studying the rainforest soil. The camp was no more than a few tents in the jungle, but after a long trek through wilderness, anything was welcome. One of the researchers approached them, a tall, dark-haired woman who introduced herself as Dr. Cavallo. You must be Lucy, Oliver, and Mo. It's nice to meet you. Your professor, Dr. Meridian, is my former teacher, she said. She called me by radio to explain the situation. So you want to find the jaguars? Then you have a long way yet to go. After their long journey to get to camp, that was the last thing Lucy wanted to hear. How was the Amazon so big? She was already exhausted and she knew the others were too. Why can't we research jaguars here? Oliver asked, eyeing the camp's computer equipment longingly. We're in the Amazon, right? Do jaguars only appear in certain parts? Jaguars live all over the Amazon, Dr. Cavallo said. But if you want to find out what's threatening them, you'll have to go to where people live. They spent the night in camp and got to watch the researchers work. Many went on expeditions into the rainforest while others came back with samples of dirt. They examined the tiny containers of soil with microscopes. One of the researchers explained it was important to monitor soil quality in the Amazon because frequent rains washed away nutrients necessary for plant growth a process known as leaching. The next day, the locators embarked on a motorboat down the Amazon River. Dr. Cavallo helped them navigate the twisting, narrow waterway. They saw small crocodiles called caimans lounging on the banks. At least we don't have to walk, Oliver said as he tinkered with their busted phone. The Amazon River was one of the longest rivers in the world at 4,000 miles. Walking it would take a long time. Or fly, Mo added. When we arrive, Lucy said, how will we find a jaguar? That's a good question, Dr. Cavallo said. Jaguars are solitary creatures that are great at stalking prey. In short, they don't like to be seen. Your best bet is to stake out near a jaguar's preferred habitat. This mission was turning out to be a lot more difficult than Lucy had thought it would be, but she couldn't let herself get discouraged. Being part of the locators meant more than anything to her. Re-energized, Lucy used her tablet to pull up a map of their destination, the Brazilian state of Roraima, where Professor Meridian believed jaguars were in danger. The scale bar told her the area was hundreds of miles wide. I can't believe the professor didn't tell us where the jaguar's habitat is, Lucy said. Mo squawked, I sure can. The professor's always trying to test you kids. I'm glad bird school's way easier than people school.
Is bird school even a thing, Oliver asked. Of course. Where do you think I learned to talk, Mo said. You can narrow down the area if you know the places jaguars like best, Dr. Cavallo said. They're fond of dense forests because they like to hide in the brush. They love to swim, so they hang around areas with lots of water. However, they don't particularly enjoy highlands or mountainous areas. Lucy examined the map. Based on the clues Dr. Cavallo gave, she tried to think of where Jaguar would most want to live. Do the locators find the Jaguars and get them to safety? Find out by reading The Locators, Adventure in South America. I hope you enjoyed our time together. I sure did. To learn more, visit the Locator site and find fun activities for you to do. See you there!